tech at NYU and uh, probably not a first for any of you who are going through Zoom classes. Uh, yeah, this is weird, but I'm excited and I hope you are. So this is an intro to P5JS, which is a JavaScript library. It's one I have fallen in love with. It's, I think it was developed by a couple of people in um, ITP, which is a program, a graduate program at NYU, um, which is kind of dedicated to like the intersection between code and um, like and the arts. It's a really cool program. Um, I did ITP camp last summer, not to make this an ad for ITP, but uh, it's just a really cool way to kind of express a more creative side that you don't always get to with um, normal coding. So I'm gonna start by showing off the P5JS site a bit because it is, I think what's really nice about um, this library is how good the documentation is. It's really um, straightforward. The community is really good. Um, and so this is the opening page. You kind of just, or this is the getting started page where you're really just like talking about kind of how to get um, P5JS loaded up into um, an HTML page, which is uh, really, it's, it kind of can add a lot to web development. I think this is a really, like primarily this is a web development tool. Um, and it can work with a lot of thing, with a lot of different programs too, like the P5JS is not just an animation library. It's a lot of other things too. I'll show you some examples of uh, things that you can do with P5JS. These are all like in the, ooh, I got a cat. Ooh, there it is. Um, these are just examples that people have made um, that you can just look out and check out on the website. They have a really good development. I'm gonna stop playing this game because that's not what I'm here for, but you get the idea. It's a snake game. And you can see all the code is right here. And so you can kind of like break through it this is pretty intense for what's here, but yeah, so you can kind of see what's going on and you can also change it like on the fly so I can make it not work anymore. Pretty cool. <laughs> and you know, like remix it and stuff. Um, so now it doesn't work. Isn't that fun? Uh, let's see another one. This one is just some cool like randomness. Cool. It's on a glitch site, which we're gonna talk about glitch sites too. Um, if, which is, if it's something you haven't seen before, it is a really good web development tool, but yeah, that's some just randomly generated snow using P5JS. Um, some data visualizations right here. We've got, this is the norm, what the normal editor looks like. So you code over here and then you, you hit play and it shows the output of your code. Uh, right here, it's taking a JSON document and it's, uh, doing all that which is pretty cool. I don't really know what it means. Uh, I wouldn't say P5JS is definitely the best uh, data visualization library, but it does work. Um, there's some 3D capabilities. I'm not even gonna go over them because I don't think they're that impressive. <laughs> but the uh, something that we're gonna go into later today, hopefully, if we have time, is um, P5JS sound, which yeah, you can hear some sounds. And this is all P5JS. Um, and you can do a lot of interesting stuff with audio. You don't even have to use the visualizations when you're working with the sound. I've used, when I just want like a website to play a song and like have a button, I can use P5JS sound, I think it's called, um, to like have a song running in the background. You can get the volume of it. You can make the page responsive in different ways. It's a really good tool. Um, so what we're doing today is we're going to try, I'm going to try and show off how easy it is to kind of like get P5JS working on an HTML page. Um, I think, I mean, like I said, this is mainly a web design tool. Um, it can really spruce up a page really simply and, um, I can show maybe one of, let me get this thing out of here. I can show you, um, i6 sims graphics. I'm going to show off something. I did this like little um, interactive title here that you can kind of scroll through with P5JS. It's just a fun way to spruce up sites. Um, actually, I'll leave that open because I might go back to that for some sound stuff. But um, getting back to this. So it's really cool how easy you can display your work. Um, I've used it for making reactive things to songs um, just to kind of make a song release more interesting. Um, I've done it for websites, like I said, um, and yeah, 
right here, I think this is a link to yes. So this is a link to a glitch pay, uh, glitch website, which if you've never used this before, it's a really um, nice tool for uh, basically um, quickly archetyping a um, web page. So right here, it's very simple. I just have this, and if you go into um, you can kind of re you can choose to remix this, so it'll basically take you to the project, and it, you'll just be like editing it on on your own copy. Um, I think it's I think coding along on this uh, presentation is, would be a good way to go about it, but you can do whatever you want. And uh, here I'm just going to touch on this. This is just further resources. Um, coding train is the um, this it's run by this NYU professor named Daniel Schiffman. And he is awesome. Um, I highly recommend checking out his channel. Even if you're not that interested in P5JS, he's got a lot of uh, good coding, like creative coding uh, examples and is just a really cool, interesting professor that we want to have do an event, but uh, he won't email us back. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's, uh, he has a machine learning for, for art class for IMA next semester. That sounds awesome. Yeah, thanks Ivana, I didn't know that. Um, I am checking the chat by the way, so if anybody has any questions or anything. Also, are, have we had any questions in the question thing? I'm not checking that. Just let me know if there is one. Um, but yeah, so let's get into coding a bit. I'm actually gonna start with um, the web editor here because I think it's a really way to quickly like understand what's going on. A true streamer always checks that. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> um, so what I have here is the basic setup of any P5JS um, like script. Uh, let me see, yeah. So this is like what they have going on here. It's very simple. It's just the index page where it's loading in the uh, all of the um, you, yeah, you don't, you don't really even need glitch for this just because it's kind of already all hard baked in here. I didn't know you could open this up to be honest. I haven't used this in a little while, but, um, so this is the, the two primary functions that kind of comprise every P5 JS, um, script. So it's two things and literally what this does is set up, it runs once and then draw runs over and over and over again. So I'm gonna try and kind of show that off a bit. I'm gonna make a variable, which if you don't know JavaScript, I'm gonna run through some basic stuff. So let X, this is kind of creating a variable and uh, the two like variable declarations uh, out there are um, let and const and const just means it's not gonna change and let means it, uh, you're gonna change the value of this um, variable. So I'm going to do plus equals uh, one and I'm going to put X in here. So this is the background, which is, I don't know why I pointed like, <laughs> like that. Uh, so the background is that gray square right here. It's set to 220, which is uh, the RGB value. or well, it's not the RGB value, but you can make it the RGB value. I'll show that off. I'm going to make this X comma zero comma zero. And so basically this is, R, so this is the red value. And as it goes, since it starts at zero, and since this draw function runs over and over again, it's gonna quickly become uh, a bright red, I believe, if everything works. Yeah. See how it started at zero, zero, zero? So it was black, and now it's going up to 255 um, in the red column here. So now it's a nice bright red. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, the basic idea where you have this draw thing running over and over this draw function running over and over and over again, which uh, kind of allows you to do these animations. So I'm going to start with, ooh, I'm just looking at my notes a little bit. I'm going to start with um, kind of the simple shapes that they give you. So uh, let's do this. Uh, how do you spell ellipse that way? That's a fun little uh, tip for you. So now we're getting into like the shape library and um, there are tons of really cool like functions that are in the um, P5JS library that it's just so fun to kind of scroll through um, what's going on. I'm going to take this out. I'm just going to set this to like 
What color are we what color are we thinking, guys? Color in the chat. Give me a color in the chat. I need one. I need one. Turquoise. I orange. What is or what's the colors of orange? It's uh red and like uh stop, those are too hard. I like Matthew. Red and yellow, RGB. That's not one of them. I can write orange. Damn. Let's see that. Let's see if that's true. No, I can't. Did I spell it wrong? No, I can't. Oh. This is fun. Oh, I'm going to try it. I want to see if that works. I would have. Thank you, Fred, but I'm going to try the uh, the orange thing here. Let's see this. Oh, you were right. I'm sorry to write you off like that. Well done. Uh, yeah, cool. So yes, so now we have this circle here. Yay, we have a circle. Yay. Um, this is still boring though. Let's make it uh, cooler. Um, I'm gonna put this, mouse X, mouse Y. And I bet you can assume what's going to happen here. Yeah, so sorry, this is the X and the Y value and this is the radius. So X, Y, and then you can make this like 690 just to prove my point. So yeah, ooh, there it is. So this is like, so it's stretched out that way because I put the 90 there. And if I did, maybe this is 100, let's do a thousand. Let's make it so big. Yeah, look at that. That's a long ellipse. <laughs> Uh, wait, can you make the background change brightness when you move around? Um, yes, I can. Let's do that. Mouse X, uh, zero, mouse Y. So yeah, this is like what I love about this freaking thing. So that's so cool. See, it's already cool. Uh, and then when it goes up here, it's black. And it goes, yeah, it's fun. Uh, and there's fuchsia or whatever turquoise what were we looking for turquoise somewhere in there but yeah so you can really start to play with a lot of these variables um you can like like that snake game you can make a video game with a lot of this stuff um so let's i want to make this canvas bigger because i don't like how small it is um so i'm going to do window height and this is another thing like like mouse x and mouse y which are these like baked in um variables uh with is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, so now it's big. Uh, so you can see the whole thing there, which is cool. Um, and also I'll throw this in here just because I, um, when you guys, if you guys actually wanna use this on a um, HTML website, something you really need that is not necessarily that intuitive is this. Sorry, I'm coding on a bit of a weird, keyboard uh i want window resize oh yeah resize canvas so it basically takes the canvas that we have and will uh do that <laughs> and when it uh i've screwed it up already whatever all right stressful code typing in front of everybody lordy so yeah, so now when I resize it here, so this, I didn't explain it well, but uh, basically it's so it can stay. Did I screw it up? Cause I feel like it's not doing what I want to do. Resize canvas. Oh, I need to run it again. So yeah, see how there was that white line coming up before? And there still is, maybe it's just not the full, I don't know. I'll put it, I'll do it in glitch just to prove that I'm not crazy, but um Let's keep moving with what we got here. Um, I also want to show you one thing that's kind of cool with uh, the background. If we get rid of it and we keep the ellipse, you'll see that there's like a line drawing behind it. Um, so when we move this around, we can kind of see that there's like it's leaving this trail, which makes like drawing stuff really easy. But it's basically because because we're not drawing the background every frame, we have this. Uh, it's kind of leaving the line of where the circle once was. You can kind of do cool, trippy stuff with that. Uh, I'm going to bring that back though, because that's not what I want. Um, so yeah, uh, let's keep going. 
so let's do a, let's make another, um, I'm going to make something in here that's going to work with some, with this, another sort of baked in variable called if mouse is pressed. Um, and this is going to make it so when we click down, um, the ellipse is going to show instead of it just showing all the time. So when we're here, it's not, nothing's happening. Well, we still have the background, the mouse X, mouse Y, but we have to wait until we're clicked to do this. And if we were to have like the background cut out here, I'm going to make this not a crazy size anymore. It's distracting. It's distracting. Um, then we can kind of draw with it, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, let's see. I also have, we can also do a couple things with just JavaScript that are kind of fun. Um, let's make, yeah, let's make a slider. So let's do that. Let slider. Um, in this position. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Slider equals create slider uh, zero, two fifty five, and three. So that zero to two fifty five are the values. I forget what the last one does. Let me play with it and see. Yeah, so here it is at the bottom here. So um with that we can do let's make this let's make that the stroke uh yeah let's make that the stroke and i'm also going to change from ellipse here to something to something called line um which will just make it more of a drawing program because that's kind of what i'm going for here today i think what i also really like about p5.js is uh how uh it's kind of really opens the door for interaction with the website so it just like, I think people will be so much more engaged on websites where they can like have kind of an influence over the design of it. Um, so the stroke, and then let's change this to line. So that's kind of what I'm working off of today. Um, line, mouse X, mouse Y. And then, so with line, um, you need something called P mouse, oops, mouse, X, am I spelling it wrong? It just looked wrong in my mind right there. Mouse Y. All right, let's see if this works. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there we got a line and then ready? We got this slider down here. Boom, did I screw it up? No, I just didn't set it at first. So now it's real thin there and then it's uh, Ivana, of course, anytime. I, I got my eyes on all chats, see that? Um, let's make it, I want it bigger. Is it really going to stay at like, I don't know, whatever, but yeah, so we can make the stroke kind of change based on these values. We can also, if we take about the background, the line's going to disappear, right? Yeah. We're just kind of like a little trace of it, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So let's keep moving. Let's keep on moving. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to start kind of playing with the color um, or playing with these functions that we're going to kind of set up outside of the draw function. So just working with stuff like function. Uh, it's stressful to code in front of people. Looks like that looks like noodles. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas. <laughs> uh, I spelled stuff wrong. Uh, that. Can I? Yes, Jay Lee. Sorry, one sec. I didn't really see what you said. You might have to message message it again. But um, okay. So basically, what I was going to be playing with was kind of just building onto this um, the draw function. So just kind of playing with like the randomness of. Um,
let's do it in the like a spark. Okay, wait, I'm going to mention something that I'm seeing in a chat right now. Um, there is going to be a potentially a spark AR workshop, um, which uh, is like a Facebook AR. Is, is that right? Facebook? Um, it's like a Facebook AR um, kind of program that's kind of being built up. Um, I don't know a ton about it, but we're thinking about having a panelists come and talk about uh, that project. And uh, if you are interested, let us know in the chat. Um, we're trying to figure out, we're gonna be, it's with Facebook engineers. There you go. So people that know what they're talking about, <laughs> which is good, a good thing. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm gonna, yeah. So basically we can keep building with this. I'm gonna show some some stuff that I, I'm gonna just gonna play with this thing called math.random, which if you uh, have coded before, you know what that is. Um, but because this is always running, we're always gonna get these random values. Let's actually let's do let rand. Rand equals math.random times five. That sounds that sounds right. And then basically what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change this back to ellipse. I don't want, did I spell, I spelled that wrong. Uh, how do you spell ellipse? <laughs> E-L. Oh, my dyslexia is coming out. Oh, God. Oh, there it is. You know. Sorry, I'm just getting to my notes too. Ellipse, there you go. Uh, and let's just do rand, uh, rand. So, and let's get rid of this. Actually, let's just see what this looks like. So these are small, let's do 500. It's okay, Brad, I don't know how to spell half the time either. Beautiful. Ah! So now it's this kind of crazy raving thing. If we take away the background, we can kind of see these uh, cool like trails of it. That's too big. I don't like how it's going. Let's go, uh, let's go 50. So yeah, it's cool, like organic. You can definitely play with like red, like organic uh, textures here. Um, yeah, I don't know, that looks really cool. It's like a minimalist art piece. Um, and then we can also throw these values. Let's do another random one. Let's do, uh, I'm just putting, so I'm defining the variables outside of uh, these functions. So they aren't defined constantly. It's not like, like if we put let here, it would still work, but kind of defining it outside of the draw function, especially like you can define it in the setup for sure. But in the draw function, especially you're just constantly like defining that variable and filling it with a value, which is taxing on um, JavaScript. JavaScript does, uh, does slow down relatively easily like i've had um it's very easy to crash uh the website or whatever you're working on when you are like uh when you kind of start making fuck is what i just wrote that's not what i read to write <laughs> phil uh let's do phil rand two uh Rand two, Rand two. Let's see what that looks like. I, no way. That's that's gonna be look weird. Let's do zero zero because that was just gonna be like black or white, uh, which is not that fun. But having cool like shades of red. Let's do two fifty five here just so we can get the full pedigree. I don't know if that's the proper use of pedigree, but that looks nice, doesn't it? Looks very organic. So yeah, and like if you just go onto a website and you can have this kind of set up as the background of your site, it's really just like, just having this, just like while you're moving your cursor along, that's just like a, such a fun little like um, way to do it, like way to do it. And also, ooh, do I have that in my notes? There's kind of a way to, a fun way to like make it fade away that I want to see if I have in here. So it, like basically, so you don't have to keep like, all the circles on screen so it doesn't like fill up but look that's cool um yeah so this is kind of like a simple drawing um 
a simple like drawing uh oh now oh i see look at that so you can kind of play with the outsides of it make it white there um a simple like drawing app for any website the way to uh i'll also say if you want to use this on a website or something you have to be aware of this really kind of obnoxious thing called where basically you're gonna have to make the canvas an object so let I'm going to put this outside. Let canvas. Canvas equals create canvas window height. So what the reason I'm doing this right now is um, dot position zero zero is because um, you want to basically set the Z index of the canvas to be back in the page. So the Z index in web development is not a very often used tool, but with P5JS, if you don't have it set like negative here, I'll show you it's canvas. You can also just do this in um, CSS. Um, canvas style Z index. Uh, comma, I bet people are making fun of my typing. It's I'm on a weird keyboard guys. Be nice to me. Um, I'm also not a fast typer generally, uh, canvas style Z index negative one. So what this does is nothing, uh, for, Oh, you see, actually it did do something. It did do something mom. It, so <laughs> the slider here, you know, how I was down here before. Like if I do this, uh, it pops down to the bottom here. Oh. I lied. Oh, it's because it's an absolute positioning. So you see how it pops down to the bottom here? It's because it's basically the canvas is being treated as an object on the page. But if I do the positioning zero, zero, I think it makes it into like absolute, which if you know CSS, you know what that means. But basically now uh, it's behind, this canvas is behind uh, the elements on the page. Um, so it basically makes it so you can, you know, make it as a cool background on your website, which I would highly recommend. It makes something, it's so simple and makes just a, a website way more captivating. Um, so something else I wanted to talk about um, that we touched on earlier was, uh, was amplitude. Um, so something I love about P5JS is, um, this is the sound library is P5, is, uh, what's it called? I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look what it's called. I think it's like sound. Where are the, where are we? It's going to be in the editor where I was. <laughs> I was just here, but uh, P5 sound. I was right. Or P yeah, I was saying P5 JS sound. It's P5 sound. And what it does is uh, pretty cool. I uh, like what it does. I'm going to go to the glitch here uh, just because I have, a um a song file loaded in so i'm gonna kind of start over here with let song on the outside let's copy and paste some of the eh, no i can just kind of go from scratch here oh i already have that line so this is just loading in um a song and i'm gonna start building up this create canvas um, 100, let's just make it 100, 100. Cause we're not really focused on that on this one. Um, background 255, zero, zero. Um, again, just kind of going through the basic setup. I'm doing this right here because I uh, don't want this to be super loud. Uh, and for some reason this, loves to play music way too loud. And I don't know why I think it must have something to do with, um, I don't know, but it's just, maybe it's just because it's taking the natural, I was going to say something that I was trying to be smart, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we don't even need draw right now. We're going to bring up this thing called function, uh, mouse press, which I believe I showed you before. But basically, so when this is pressed, it's going to, um, when anything is clicked, it doesn't even have to be the canvas, it can be anywhere. Um, it's going to do 
what we're going to say. Um, if song dot is playing. Uh, got my notes. Stop. So this is just so when every time you click it, this is gonna what's gonna happen. So what I'm adding right now is basically if uh, if the song is already playing uh, and you click, it's gonna stop the song. And uh, I'm gonna change the background just to show that it is again stopped. It's gonna so it's gonna default with stopped because we don't have it hit play yet. Uh, if that was a weird sentence, uh, but we'll move past it. <laughs> I hope you understand what I meant. Song.play. And let's change the background to green. Five, five, and zero. Um, and let's do it. So I'm playing this the new Charlie XCX song because I like it and I load it into the files. Um, this is a scary intro. It's a normal song. Right. Good idea. So when I click again, as you can see, so every time I hit it, it's going to hit song play and it's going to start from the top. You can save the, you can save the, um, location where I shouldn't be touching my face. We're in a quarantine guys. Don't touch your face. Uh, but yeah, we, you, um, I lost my train of thought. Yes. So when you click it, it's going to hit this if statement. Song is not playing. Uh, so then song play, and it's going to change that background, as you can see. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's starting from the beginning every time. There's ways to get around that. So it kind of starts in the middle. Um, and then obviously when you click it again, song stop. I'll also show you something kind of cool that you can, there's just plenty of ways to build off of this. Like I said, it's really good for if you want to show off a song in a really interesting way, uh, like with a website or something. Um, I'm going to make an object here that is called the, uh, it's an amplitude object. Whoops. Uh, amplitude. I spelled it right. Oh, I didn't define analyzer. I also don't like about glitch because it doesn't really know what's, oh no, wait, I lied. I was going to say it doesn't know what's going on with P5JS, but I think it does, maybe. Or maybe it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Because it doesn't know all the P5JS functions, so it's definitely better to work in the web editor. I didn't know that it had all these files. I probably would have put the song file in here. I don't use this a lot, but it is really good for um, kind of setting up stuff. But usually I kind of just work in on the website that I'm working on when I use this online. Um, where was I? Not here. Get this freaking zoom thing out of here uh that wasn't it am i crazy am i going nuts where was i there you are um so analyzer is now this little thing here and again we're using let i don't actually know if you need to use let there because it's an object i'm not going to get into javascript stuff but um it's if you do get into javascript stuff there's definitely something to be said about let versus const versus var Main point, don't use var. Um, and so with this analyzer, we're gonna make an, another ellipse, the classic ellipse. And we're gonna make it, uh, let's make it, this is a hundred, right? 50, yeah, a hundred. So let's make it 50, 50. So that's gonna be centered in the middle there. Hopefully that'll come up. Or let's make it uh, 20, 20. See, so there's a little, little circle there and then ready. This is exciting. Analyzer dot get level. Uh, I don't know if this is going to go full hour, but we'll see. Analyzer dot. I feel like I just kind of started rushing through this. I hope it's all been made sense um, to anybody who's around. So now, did I screw something up? I feel like I did. Oh, no, I see. Wait, why is that so small? Let's do, uh, let's do 50. Um, so now the analyzer, which is, to, oh, I didn't put the song as the input. That will cause a problem. Is that right? I think that's right. Let's see. 
It's still showing. This is the scariest intro. I shouldn't have chose this song. <laughs> All right, no, it's not working. Uh, let me think. Let's see what's going on here. So we have the analyzer get level. Is it? Do I have to put song here? I don't think I did before, but maybe I do. We can always look in the uh, documentation. What's going on? We can also a helpful trick is to look in the console, which is Control Shift I, to see what's going on because it'll give you these errors. Uh, uh, audio those blah, blah, blah. amplitude. So I don't think that's the way to do it. I don't know why it's not. Oh, it's because the master volume's at point one, so it's like not uh, that loud. <laughs> so let's make it a let's make it a big. Let's make it like five hundred. So yeah, you see how the master volume's point one. I think that was doing it. Maybe I'm wrong though. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, even five hundred is not doing loud. Let's go. Now we got to listen to this freaking intro again. Uh, did that work? Yeah, it was just preloading the song. So yeah, so now you can see it's kind of doing like a reactive thing with it. I'm not gonna subject you to that again. But yeah, it's doing a reactive thing with it. Uh, it's so good for, um, for song stuff. Honestly, like I use, I, I've been doing a lot more like 3D animations recently with like a, with the Ken Perlin's graphics class. And I use P5JS sound just for the sound aspect. And it's worked great. It's really responsive. It uh, is quick. It's pretty light. It's pretty lightweight. I will say there's probably way, um, way less heavy audio libraries because you would also, you also have to have P5 and P, you have to have P5JS and P5.sound. Um, so it's not the lightest library, but it's still not that heavy. Um, I was going to show off a graphics assignment that I did. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, this one. So this one I did with P5. And you can also, I hope you guys can hear that. Um, but you can like speed up the tempo. Um, and slow it down. And all of this, all of the audio controls I'm doing here, and the amplitude getting and all that stuff is with P5. Uh, JS. Sound, or P5.sound. Right. And let me see. I think I have one more that I use sound in. Yeah. So this is this act this one is actually um looking at the whole frequency like wavelength. So it's looking at the low ranges of this loud. So it's looking at the low ranges of the um, frequency all the way up to the high ranges. I feel like I'm focusing on sound too much, but I feel like it's a really uh, important aspect of P5JS. Um, so it looks at, it kind of goes through the whole frequency range and takes it out and graphs it along this. So this is like the higher ranges of the audio and this is the bass. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I think that's kind of wrapping it up. I, uh, does anybody have any questions about this library? Um, wow. Only on a sign. Thank you, Lena. Um, anybody have any questions that they, uh, are interested in getting answered? I, oh my Lord. Um, I, if not, I really recommend kind of looking into this library. I'll go back to the website. Um, these meeting controls. Oh my Lord, my background. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, I'm not embarrassed. Look at all my freaking icons. Look how messy my desktop is. I don't care. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I want today. It's weird just talking to yourself. I don't get how teachers do this. This is so strange. Um, yeah, so this is, I'm gonna go to the reference site again because I wanna show the references. Like this is 
why p5.js is so easily usable it's like there is such a low barrier of entry it's like so kind of the people that made this website you've got like everything on one page um you've got events and it's fun to just kind of like scroll through and just pick something that looks interesting and just go with it a lot of this stuff is like some of it's not that interesting uh there's some light stuff here i've never even played with that i think this is the more 3d side which i haven't really done a lot with i should show that though if we we got we still got a good amount of time i'm not gonna drag this out much longer than it has to be but um yeah so you can this is them building a donut with p5.js um let's see it that's terrifying that doesn't look like a donut <laughs> that's no freaking donut uh yeah there's a donut is it reacting to me it is yeah so that's a 3d shape like that's some sh shite lighting is that lighting that's not even lighting i don't know but yeah there's a lot to do with p5.js there's a lot of libraries um within this library like the sound one i think they're building more too and um yeah there's like i think people make their own all, all the time yeah look at this look at this look at this dom manipulation that sounds cool clickable easy to use library for buttons Co create loop loops with noise oh that's sick um yeah so i like it's just oh i'm gonna use this i'm going to use that it's like a cam bookmarked it see i'm learning guys i'm learning with you yay <laughs> um yeah so i think that kind of just about does it does anybody have any questions oh let's plug a couple things um let's plug first the spark ar try to we'll uh keep Keep your eye on the Facebook page. We'll see what happens with that. I think that would be so cool. This is kind of more of a test to see if everything's running okay. Um, and I had fun. I mean, um, hopefully y'all did too and kind of kept an eye on what was going on. Uh, yeah, the Spark AR, we're really trying to get our feet, figure out what's going, how to kind of approach this online university, which we are forced to be a part of now. Um, but yeah, we're figuring it out. Hopefully we can try and do some social stuff. I think that is kind of, would be so nice. Um, if you guys have any feedback, uh, we are taking emails for feedback. Can we give a heads up that we are taking emails for feedback? No, we cannot. <laughs> I'm power tripping now. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, emails for feedback. Uh, what else? I think that just about does it. I, oh, I'm Twitch streaming now. Me and Lena have been hanging out on Twitch recently. Uh, check that out. I think it's just tech at NYU with AT because they didn't let us do it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Jason, Pog. <laughs> yeah, we screw around. It's fun. Um, and yeah, uh, it's a good time. Join us. I think that just about does it. Anybody else have any questions, have any things to say, have any thoughts, have any Zoom bombs that they want to throw in there? <laughs> I think that does it. Um, Lena, you got anything you want to say? That's our tech at no. NYU president. No. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for attending. I'll come back on. No. Ooh, no. with the bangs. Lena's got bangs, guys, and I have a mustache. I'm going to back changing. away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So thank you all for coming. Does, is Michael on here? Uh, I don't know. But yes. Uh, also, if you guys have any ideas of what other things you want us to do, not just yeah. Zoom workshops. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I do like... I, I like workshops. Craft. Plug our Minecraft. <laughs> I do like workshops, but I do think it's really limiting in terms of like social interaction. Like I want to talk to people. 
this is yeah. not yeah but so we might open up a discord server for the public but not yet sure how yeah. we will monitor that cool uh sorry if you're not into gaming like me you might have to make an account <laughs> <laughs> get that discord count account all right i think that just about does it um i've said that like four times yeah of course thanks thank you guys so much for coming um y'all are the bomb uh i hope y'all if, if you weren't able to talk or had questions don't be afraid to email um and stay curious keep looking at p5js stuff and thank you uh i'm gonna head out have a good one guys